Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to be talking about the way that I do my file organization or like to do. Sometimes I don't even do this, but this is pretty much what I like, what I think is a good medium ground between some of the stuff that I'm seeing on YouTube and some of the stuff that a lot of people usually do. So I basically have these simple pages. One is the cover page that basically includes the cover file. Uh, which I'm gonna make a thumbnail for easy access. You can also have an image on the thumbnail as well if you want, if that helps you. Um, so that's that. Then you have a trash file. So this trash is where anytime you're working on a design, a concept doesn't work, an idea doesn't work, you basically just grab that. Instead of deleting it, you basically just move it here. So you have all of your trash secured. Uh, and let's say if, you want, if you're writing a case study or you just wanna head back to that previous idea you were thinking about one month ago, you can easily come to your trash file and access certain elements of it or access the whole page basically, or frame. Then you have your components. Uh, so in your components, obviously you're gonna keep your components that are going to be uh, coming from the different designs that you have created in this file. Ideally, you obviously would have your design library that's gonna create most of, or contain most of your components, but this file is just gonna be like any new designs that you're creating uh, are gonna need some components, so these are just gonna be in here. Then you have your user research, where you're gonna have your user research related to this particular feature. For example, any testing that you've done, any data that you've collected from users that is gonna be helpful. Uh, and usually this is collected elsewhere. It's not collected in the Figma file, but for example, there are certain decisions that you're making on the design side that need those user research points. For example, if I'm making uh, a design uh, about navigation and that navigation is really impacted by especially on desktop, it's impacted by the most common resolution my or the users of my particular player application have, then I'm gonna put that stat in here so that I don't have to jump again and again onto Looker or any other Google Analytics tool or whatever. I'm basically just gonna keep screenshots of important information and I'm gonna keep them here just in case I wanna reference them in terms of design or I wanna show it to my design teammates when I'm making certain decisions. Then you have inspiration. So anytime you're creating a design, for example, I'm creating, let's say, a project management tool, or maybe I'm working on a specific feature, like for example, saving views uh, in project management. So I'm gonna go to Asana, I'm gonna go to Trello, I'm gonna go to Notion, I'm gonna go to, for example, ClickUp or something along those lines, and then I'm gonna basically copy the screenshots of that particular feature that I really like in these competitor tools, or maybe on Dribble, Behance. Usually I would recommend not using Dribble, Behance for too much inspirations, actually using real life products, but whatever that, whatever the case may be, I'm basically just gonna have those screenshots and I'm gonna paste them here. So I don't have to go search for them whenever I want to look at something. So usually what happens is a lot of people actually look at something on Behance, Dribble, or in a real product, and they don't take screenshots. They basically just go, okay, I understand this is what I need to create, and then they come here and create it, and when they're creating it, they are probably going back and forth 10 or 20 times looking at those different things to see how that looks. So it's really important to create those or take those screenshots and place them here because it's gonna be beneficial. Then you have your designs. So if you're just basically working on a simple design, it's just done. You don't even need to make it sprint one, sprint two, V1, V2. These can be anything basically. But if you're done, it's just like one design. You can just label it design. And whatever is done, basically add a check mark next to it and place it at the top. So anyone who's coming into the file can see it directly, especially developers. So that's something that you can do. A lot of people create separate pages for prototypes and stuff along those lines, but I usually like to prototype the same designs that I've basically done so I don't have to duplicate them. And I would recommend doing the same for you as well. So let's say you're done with, let's say V1 or Sprint 1 of that particular feature. If this feature was, let's say, I don't know, uh, saving views in project management, in a project management tool. Once you're done with that, now you have another feature on top of it that is about saving views, but it's like extending that feature or extending the capability of that feature. You can create a, sep a, a separate page right below it called Sprint 2 or V2 or whatever that thing is. However, you're uh, quantifying that in your release process. So you can go ahead and label it that, and then you can start creating your design here. Ideally, what you wanna do is you don't want these to just go completely haywire or uh, out of control. Usually when you're working on larger features, you probably can have, let's say 10 or 20 different iterations on that particular design. <clears throat> 
it's really important to separate those iterations out into separate pages so you can see what the previous iteration looked like. You would have that screenshot. That's really important. But for example, if let's say this particular design has been running for a year, or let's say you've been iterating on it for about a year or two years or something, then I'm, you're definitely gonna have, let's say 20 design iterations or maybe even more. So what you need to do in that particular instance is, you need to delete the iterations or the older iterations that you're no, no, no longer using. Maybe just have like three or four or five at max iterations here so you can reference them. But once you go past five or let's say go past whatever that number is that you're uncomfortable working with, you basically just press command option S. Once you press command option S, you get this window add to version history. And before deleting those pages, say this is, this contains design iterations v1 to v5 and right now maybe you're working on v10 so you're going to have v6 to v10 currently in your file and you're going to delete v1 to v5 after you've made this particular commit in the history so once you've deleted them you're basically going to have that one place to actually just go to that particular or go to these particular pages if you want to if you want to reference that history so that's pretty much what i would like to do in my file organization it's not complicated it's really simple just a few key pages and i think that's sufficient so i know a lot of you requested it and that's pretty much it do let me know if you have any questions one important thing i'd like to add in the end is once you're done with everything be sure to actually just go ahead and save this file so save this file to a name like template file or whatever and pin it on top of your team or project or whatever that thing is so anytime you're basically creating a new design you're going to go to this file right click on it you don't even have to open it and duplicate it once you duplicate it then you can change the cover the name the title everything but basically keep this file as a template file so you can keep on duplicating it when you need to go ahead and create any new design